Great to see you all today. This is a very important day in the history of this uh, football program and our athletics program and the university as a whole. When we started the process on Sunday afternoon, uh, my encouragement to Don and his team was to move swiftly but carefully, uh, make sure we made the right decision. I know he interviewed a lot of coaches by Zoom and then did some in-person interviews. And I want to thank him and uh, Travis Comer, who's in the back there, who uh, were highly involved in the, in the conversation with other coaches. Uh, I asked them to look for a couple things, someone who's got experience being a head football coach, someone who had close ties with Texas football and Texas high school football in particular, uh, and also someone who had an offensive scheme that could score a lot of points. And I think we found someone who can do that. Something like 50 points a game this year, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we're trying to build a program here that, that, uh, that the university and our community can be proud of. We understand how important football is to Texas and how important it is to our fans and our alumni and our current students as well. And we're excited about the opportunity in front of us. The other thing I told uh, all the coaches, candidates that we talked to uh, was about the alignment between the president's office and the athletics department. Uh, there's a strong correlation between what I'm thinking and what Don's thinking, and I'm really grateful to have his leadership in our athletics department. Having alignment between athletics and the uh, central administration is very important for a head football coach to know that he's got support up and down the line. The other thing I ta talked to them about was uh, our interest in investing more heavily in the football program, athletics in general, but football in particular. Uh, we already have a project in mind for expanding our weight room facilities. Uh, we have a long-term plan for uh, building an indoor facility, but we actually have been in, t in conversations in the past week of accelerating that time on having an, on -door, an indoor facility come online a lot quicker. Also investing uh, in our coaching staff by having incentives built into the contract and having more money available for the assistant pool, which is also very important for a head coach to be able to, to hire the coaches that he wants. And also increasing the, uh, the recruiting uh, budget, which is something we did last year as well, but maintaining that as well. So we are ready to invest in uh, this program, and that starts with hiring our next football coach. With uh, that kind of investment comes a lot of expectations. Uh, I've said to many of you in this room, our expectations at the bare minimum are going to a bowl game. That means a 500 record, but we want to be better than 500. We expect to be competing in short order for, for uh, conference championships, and as the expanded playoff comes together, we expect to be in the, in the conversation about that, getting ranked as a football team and also being in the conversation for uh, perhaps uh, being part of the college football playoff when that comes around, when our time comes. So we're excited about that. With that being said, my job now is to introduce the introducer. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our athletics director, Don Coriel. Well, thank, thank you, Kelly. Appreciate the kind words. We are so in line, and we didn't compare scripts. You pretty much said everything that I'm going to say, so I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, as Kelly mentioned, we had a great pool of, of coaching candidates because of the great opportunity that we have here at Texas State. Um, I also want to acknowledge that, uh, that there are several aspects uh, that our previous staff did for our program that were outstanding. And that starts with our student athletes and the high character people that we have in our program. And I want to thank Coach Spavital for that. However, everybody who's here today and everybody who's, uh, who's watching at home uh, knows that Texas State should be winning football championships. We have too much to offer. We have an institution that is second to none. Winning is not optional here. Once we get this program rolling, and I promise you we will do it, look out. We want to play in championships and not just Sun Belt championships. Kelly also said this, but we want to play in college football playoff expansion championships. With the new expanded format in 2024, our league will be in those conversations. This is a testament to the Sun Belt, but it's also a reality of where we want to be and where we can go. We want to move quickly on this search, uh, but we also wanted to be diligent. I believe that we were both. It was very important for us that we hired somebody with head coaching experience. We wanted somebody who's done this before. Somebody who's won on their own, managed their own games, and learned firsthand from their experiences. Coach G.J. Kenny is having a historic season down the road in San Antonio. He's 11-1 right now. They have the nation's top offense, probably the most explosive offense in the country. As Kelly mentioned, they've got 53 points per game. 
as an average. Uh, his progression through the, uh, through the business has been very swift. Uh, and that really caught our eye as well. You know, he's been an offensive coordinator at some big time schools, Hawaii, Central Florida. Um, as a graduate assistant, Sonny Dykes, the current head coach at TCU, allowed him to call plays as a GA uh, at a bowl game for SMU. He has a very, very high football IQ. He also has deep ties in the state of Texas, and that was extremely important for us as we went through this search. He's well respected, connected to a lot of guys in the state. Uh, he's got deep roots with some of the top names in this state. His dad was a longtime high school football coach, also a collegiate player and a collegiate coach here in the state of Texas. And Coach Kenny was also an outstanding high school quarterback here in the state of Texas by any measure. He was also a great college player, starting at the University of Texas at a quarter, as a quarterback and finishing his career at Tulsa, where he was uh, the league MVP in Conference USA. And he's got five years of NFL and professional experience. He played quarterback, he played running back, he played wide receiver, he played defensive back. Did I miss any? That's it right there. In the NFL, and so, you know, he knows what it takes to, uh, to compete at the highest level, and he has a very unique perspective on the game with his experience. And I can tell you, we've done enough research to know how he treats his players, uh, and I know his players and our players here uh, are going to love uh, playing for this guy. He's vested in player development. He fits our mission, which is to create a culture where our student athletes succeed, both on the field and in the classroom. And I can tell you, as Kelly mentioned, we are completely invested in his support. We're gonna continue to prioritize the success of our football program. That means financially uh, and also administratively. Um, I do wanna thank uh, our senior staff for all their help during this search. Uh, Chris Coots, thank you as well. Um, Travis Comer, thank you for being part of the search committee. Kelly, thank you for, uh, for your help as well. Um, I want to thank Eric Algo, our VP for Finance, who also helped us out tremendously over the past week. Um, and I also want to thank, you know, I heard from a ton of fans and alumni and donors with suggestions uh, in offering their help. So thank you as well. And I also would like to thank, and I believe they're, they're here today, I want to thank the Texas High School Football uh, Coaches Association um, and also all the Texas high school football coaches that I heard from during the, uh, the search as well. We look forward to uh, building our relationship with you. And so it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you our new head football coach, G.J. Kenny. Hold on, I got some for you here. Got this for him here. I didn't tell him this, but he's got to put this on for his opening remarks. All right. Uh, first off, I'm excited. I'm honored. I'm grateful to be your new head coach. Um, I'd like to start by, by thanking Dr. Danfuss, Don Coriel, and Travis Com uh, Comer. Uh, we have unbelievable leadership here at Texas State. Uh, throughout this interview process, uh, I figured out really quickly that um, these guys are hungry. They're committed to building a championship program, which is very important to me. Um, I would like to thank a couple people. Uh, start off with my family, uh, my wife, Summer. Uh, my two boys aren't here today, they, they're, they're sick, um, but it's not easy being a coach's wife, and no one does it better, so thank you, Summer. No, we can, we can. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, UIW and uh, Dr. Evans, uh, Richard Duran, and John Burry. Um, I'd like to thank all my players, um, you know, all my coaches and the support staff, for believing in me and, and giving me opportunity and, and giving me everything you got every day. Um, you know, that's a special group down there, and uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to finish and finish the right way, and, and we're not done yet. So thank you to UIW. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of my former coaches, um, guys that, you know, I, that I played for and coached for, some of them both. Um, start off with Jeff Trailer, uh, Todd Graham and Chad Morris, Gus Malzahn, uh, Chip Kelly, Doug Peterson, and uh, Howie Roseman. Uh, you know, thank you for, for pouring into me and, and uh, making me the, the coach and person I am today. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a Texas guy through and through. Uh, I'm the son of a Texas high school football coach. I grew up on the sidelines. I grew up in the field house, on the back of the bus after the games. Um, you know, I, after I got done playing, I always knew I wanted to be a coach. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, I, my coaching uh, philosophy, I'm a player's coach. I am. 
I'm a guy that, that has a lot of fun out there, um, you know, but we're going to work hard, um, but I'm going to love them hard, harder. You know, it's all about relationships for me. Um, and the coaches I've had, you know, throughout my career that, that I knew cared about me and loved me, uh, I tended to play harder for. Uh, so that's my philosophy as, as far as that goes, uh, all about relationships. Uh, I had a different, uh, you know, some, some different opportunities that, that came up, you know, right after the season. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of them had to offer a lot of great things, but I wanted to be at Texas State. Uh, I chose to be at Texas State. Um, I'm from Texas. That was important to me. Um, I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. Um, this place is unbelievable. You have 40,000 students. You got a river flowing through campus. Uh, uh, we're the only Texas school in the Sun Belt. Um, it, this place is really unbelievable. Uh, just so fortunate to be here. We'll play an exciting brand of football um, offensively. Uh, we're going to be a tempo team. We're a run play action team, and we're going to light up the scoreboard. Um, you know, we have the number one offense, uh, the scoring offense in college football, whether that's FCS, FBS, doesn't matter. Uh, averaging close to 53 points per game. Uh, our quarterback's going to win the Walter Payton, hopefully. He deserves it. Um, he's an unbelievable player and, and fortunate to coach him as well. Uh, defensively, we're going to attack. Uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to be high tempo on defense as well. We're going to attack. Uh, we lead the, the, the country in TFLs um, and, and number three in sacks. We're going to swarm. We're going to play with great energy and, and, and relentless uh, football, play a relentless uh, style of football. Our team will play with energy. Uh, we'll have swagger to us. Um, we're going to preach discipline every day. I know how important that is. Uh, culture part is a huge piece of this deal in college football. Um, and it's simple for me. We talk about habits reflecting the mission. That'll be on the back of our shirt. It'll be in, everywhere in the building. Um, and our mission is being champions. Champions in competition, champions in the classroom, and champions in the community. Um, it, it, it's simple for me. It's easy for the guys. It's, you know, you talk about being a champion, and if, you know, you're not doing the extra, you're not doing the little things, you're sitting in the back of the class, you got your hood up, we want our guys sitting in the front. So if they're not doing the little things that we talk about, if your habits don't reflect the mission of being a champion, then, you, then you're not here, for, you know, for the right reasons. You're not, you know, you're a fraud. Um, and, and we're not going to, you know, allow that in our program. Uh, I'm going to hire a great staff, a staff that knows Texas, um, one that rec can recruit the coaches and players um, in, the, in the great state of Texas. Um, you know, I want to hire someone, uh, a coaching staff that is, is going to be a great role model for our student athletes. Um, you know, coaches that are great husbands, coaches that are great fathers. Um, I, I, th I think that's extremely important in college football. Once again, we are going to recruit Texas high school football, right? We're going to recruit. Um, we are going to recruit the portal. We're going to identify guys that, that may be left and want to come back that are from the state of Texas. There's too many, too many great players in the state of Texas um, not to do that. Uh, we, need, we need everyone, right? We need Bobcat Nation to step up like they've never stepped up before. Um, our student athletes deserve it. Uh, I believe in this place. I believe in this leadership. Um, I can't get, you know, I can't wait to, to get to work. Um, eat them up. At this time, if there's any questions. Uh, Mike Cray from Dave Campbell's. Uh, Mike? W when you take over a program, what's job number one when you walk in the door? I think hiring a great staff is one. Um, and I'll give you a couple more. Great staff and recruiting. I think those are one and two, one A, one B maybe. Um, I've started to do that. Um, and just just for everyone involved at the, at the you know, at UIW, just want to, you know, do it the right way. And then how much more prepared are you to take over this job than maybe UIW with it being your first one? Yeah, there's no doubt. Experience is, is tremendous, and, and you always got to have that. And, and there's, there's things that, just like the press conference last year and the press conference this year, just more prepared. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more prepared to recruit. Um, everything that involves being a head coach, anytime you've done it before, it's, you know, there's no substitute for experience. You know, you're coaching at two places at once right now. And you're officially here at Texas State. What has it been like for you since that happened, going back and forth to Incarnate Word and San Marcos? Yeah, I've just tried to be where my feet are, uh, pour everything I got to, you know, if I'm at Texas State and then recruiting or whether I'm at UIW at practice, just being where my feet are.
how difficult is it to recruit when you don't necessarily have your staff fully there yet, unless you do and you just can't talk about it yet? Yeah, and I'm a one-man show right now, and I'm doing it. And uh, uh, believe me, I can get it done. I'm a great recruiter, and, and uh, I'm, I'm just excited to be able to sell the, the brand of Texas State. When you hear about the culture of Texas State, what, what's one thing that you want to change the most about it, that, things that you've heard coming into this job? I want to recruit Texas high school football players. Colton McWilliams, uh, San Marcos State Record. Uh, you played under so many great coaches, Gus Malzahn, uh, Todd Graham, and you also, you know, they also helped you get into the coaching business. How great were those role models to you into becoming a, a college football coach? Yeah, they were unbelievable. Um, you know, being a great player allowed me to be around some great coaches and for them to really pour into my, my life. And, and, you know, they did it the right way, which is important. And, you know, that's, you know, why I'm the person and coach I am. And um, a lot, there's been a lot of talk about in the past how Texas State would, you know, normally ignore high school players in, in favor of like JUCO players and transfer. How important is it to reestablish those ties with the Texas high school football coaches and those players as well? Yeah, I've been been around a bunch of different states and, and coached a bunch of different states, but Texas high school football is king. Uh, there's no there's no doubt about that. So uh, we're going to recruit Texas high school football players and coaches alike. We're going to you know bridge that that relationship, and I'm going to recruit in the portal as well. Um, but the the foundation of our program is going to be Texas high school football players. And uh, funny enough, uh, your high school coach Jeff Trailer is right down the road at UTSA you know a big rivalry game uh, what has he said to you about getting this job at Texas State yeah I haven't talked to him much since I've gotten it before before a, a lot more but Jeff is awesome he's a great mentor someone I can uh, really bounce ideas off of and, and he always gives great advice and I love Jeff and, and appreciate everything he's done for me Uh, Greg Sherman, San Antonio Independent Media, Texas High School Sports Machine. Bob, first off, on the coaches, I know you may not be able to comment yet, but how many coaches are you going to retain from Texas State? How much is going to come from UIW, and how much is going to be outsiders coming in? Yeah, it's all up in there right now. I mean, I have a really good idea, but, you know, just with, with all the parties involved, I just want to keep it, you know, close to my vest right now. As, some of the, as he was mentioning a moment ago, you played for Trailer at Gilmer. You've kind of seen what he's had to do, not only to recruit the players at UTSA, but recruit the fans. It's been one of the problems that Texas State has had over the years is being able to get the fans in. What are you going to do to be able to get the fan base in here and be able to fill this stadium up, be able to have a true home field advantage? Yeah, I think one, you have to get out there and do it. Uh, and two, you have to play an exciting brand of football. And, and I proved to do that you know, this past year at UIW on offense and defense. So um, I think it's all about the, the style of play and uh, you know, just getting out and putting in the work. Final question, I know he mentioned about the, the portal and, and the high school stuff. How do you go out and re-recruit the players, let them know that, hey, I'm here for the long haul, we, that Spavadol did a great job to get to this point, but you're going to get them past the finish line. What are you telling the players? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be here for a long time. I'm a Texas guy. That's the reason I wanted this job. Um, hope to be here and build championships here for a long time. Thank you. Uh, my name is Amira Van Leven with the Hayes Free Press. Um, what are some aspects of the program other than recruiting that you plan to focus on? I think player development is always huge on and off the field. Uh, we'll, we'll have a great strength coach and, and great coaches that, that pour into these guys on and off the field. You know, we heard Dr. Damphus talk about a bowl game and how that's a big monkey on this university's back, about getting, getting to that bowl game. When you hear that, what are your thoughts about getting, getting this program to that point? And what, are your, what are some of your early objectives when you hear that, that goal? Yeah, no, we have a lot of work to do, um, but I'm excited about the opportunity. I think, you know, he's exactly right. We want to be in bowl games. We want to be um, in championships. We want to be in the college football playoff. I, I love that. Um, that's the reason I chose to come here, um, because of the expectations, because of the commitment to football. You know, coaches in the past have, have commented about the, uh, the facilities needing upgrades and everything, and we, we hear again from them that it's going to be expedited and that plans are going to happen quickly. Was that something that was important to you when you were looking around at jobs to hear that, that these plans of these, uh, these upgrades around here? Most definitely. Um, you got to have great facilities, um, not only for your current student athletes, but in recruiting as well. And like I said, that was one of the, my big draws to this, this place was the commitment to the football program. Coach, you said earlier that um, you identify yourself as a player's coach. The players that you're inheriting with this, within this program, what is your overall prevailing message to them as you now take over? Yeah, I had my first team meeting the other day, which I thought went great. 
Um, you know, I, I just talked to him who I was. I'm a relationship guy. Um, I'm a player's coach. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm, we're going to work hard now. Don't you know? We're going to work extremely hard, but I'm going to love them harder. And and you know, it, for me, when, when you get in there and you build those relationships with the kids, um, that's what it's all about. That's what I enjoy doing, pouring into their lives on and off the field. Take us back through the conversations you had with leadership with uh, with Dr. Danfus and with, with Don Coriel, the AD, and and um, what those conversations were like as you went through this process. Yeah, I think both of us, um, you know, we had our first interview, and then, you know, after that, I think we both recognized that, you know, they might be interested in me, and I was definitely interested in them. Um, so I was aggressive, and they were aggressive and, and thorough, um, and we were able to get, a, you know, get something done. Just... Uh, I wanted to be here so bad, and I think they could feel that. You know, your, your trajectory as a, a coach and your coaching career, you've gone up and up and up each year, but you've only stayed at a place for about a year at a time. That's probably one concern I've heard from fans is that you may leave soon if they have some success. What would you say to something like that about your, your long-term commitment to Texas State? No, I'm committed to Texas State. Um, I think anytime you're you're good at what you do, you know you're gonna get rewarded for that. Um, and 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 I'm I'm just so happy to be here, and I'm definitely committed to, to Texas State. Hey, you talked about your dad being a high school coach and growing up, you know, in locker rooms and stuff. Do you remember kind of the first time you knew that this is the trajectory you wanted to take when your football career ended? Yeah, I you know. I, I've, Played Texas high school football here, and I, and I knew, you know, got into college and playing professionally, and, and I knew I wanted to get into coaching, you know, at some point. And uh, when I was with the Giants, I shared this in the interview process. Uh, the Giants signed me after I got released by the Eagles, and, and Steve Spagnola and, and Tom, Tom Coughlin, uh, you know, came up to me and, and said, hey, you know, we, we want to talk to you a little bit after practice. And so I sat in there and, and built a game plan with those guys, and they traveled me and put me up in the booth on the headset with Steve and, and uh, was basically a coach when I was playing. So after that, uh, you know, that was that was a lot of fun for me, and I felt like I did a pretty good job. So I knew I wanted to get into to, to coaching after that. And you, you know, you hadn't been out of college for all that long, right? But there's been a lot of changes to college football in that time. You know, how different is coaching now? How different are the players are now, or is that kind of overblown? The kind of changes in personalities and just rules. Yeah, I think I think it has changed, but. For me, I know I keep bringing this up, it all goes back to the relationships. If, if the, the kids know you care about them, you can coach them hard. Um, and and that's, what, that's what we do, and that's what my staff will be about. Um, you've been almost around the world, you know, coached at Hawaii and then went over to Central Florida, and now back to Texas at Incarnate Word, now here at Texas State. What, you know, going through so many places as an offensive coordinator and a, and a grad assistant, what has that uh, taught you as a coach and how – you know, building relationships and how to call offensive plays and all that. Yeah, I, I've been to a lot of great places and, and been um, with a lot of great coaches and administration. And anytime you do that, I think you just build connections and, and uh, you know, resources and recruiting. It's always, it's huge in recruiting. There's, uh, you know, we're going to focus on Texas, but um, I know a lot of people out there in a lot of different states that always are willing to help. You know, your time as a professional athlete, how has that helped you as far as a relatability standpoint with athletes and everything? Do you think that's a, a really good advantage for you when you're trying to talk to these guys and build the relationships you're talking about? Yeah, there's no doubt. I feel like I have instant credibility a lot of times because I have played at the highest level and I've coached at the highest level as well with the Eagles. So um, anytime, you know, that's one of my recruiting pitches um, is, is that I mean, I've played and coached at the highest level. I was at UIW for a few years during their D1 transition, so I got to see what the transition process like was from D2 to D1 and the, the gory side of it, so to speak. What do, you, what do you take from building up what UIW was, even though you've been there just for a short time, and what do you take from that to try to build up Texas State as they try to move up in the FBS? I think it's just maximizing what you have, and, and we don't, we're not going to complain about anything. We're just going to get the job done. As a player for Trailer and now coaching, not necessarily against him right now, but what have you learned from playing for him? What have you taken from your time with him as you guys obviously will continue to be closely connected? Yeah, just like I talked about the relationship part of it, I don't think there's anyone better than, than Jeff as far as that goes. He's a great X's and O's um, coach. There's no doubt about that. But what makes him special is the relationships that he builds with his players and and. He, he, they have a lot of fun over there. Uh, we had a lot of fun at, at Gilmer High School back in the day, and 
And uh, same thing, he work, they work hard, extremely hard, but have a lot of fun doing it.